It's Diana time. Finally getting around to this dashboard. It's something I've been putting off, I'm afraid, folks. Um, but this is the dash out of Diana. Um, nice, early, flat-fronted dash. In really, really, really fantastic shape. No extra holes drilled anywhere apart from uh, where the LPG switch came through. Why? Why, 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 why? No, OK, shit happens. Anyway, so what I'm basically going to do here... Uh, this is something that Tim Hammond told me might be possible. I have got here a left-hand drive, tatty left-hand drive. Um, that's not left-hand drive, Richard. That's right-hand drive. Is it? That's right-hand drive, you fool. <laughs> Let's go get a tatty left-hand drive on. I cop something up, Richard. Make sure you chop it the right pissing thing. Right, so this is a tatty left-hand drive um, uh, under tray from a late 80s, 90s. Uh, it's either come off Southpaw or Haggis, this one, I think. Um, but the good news is the plastics are more or less exactly the same colour and the same texture. So the idea is that I cut a piece off, probably down the bottom end here, and bond it in. What is the worst that can happen? Well, I trash a left-hand drive under dash um, piece, which is why I'm going to cut it off down here rather than up there um, because at least then someone else if they decided they wanted a trashed left hand drive under dash piece then they could probably get away with it but that's pretty much what I'm going to do make sense? I shall report back probably need to tidy this straighten this hole up a little bit because I can Stevie Wonder cut it out didn't it? right, we've had a couple of goes at this first attempt <laughs> second attempt Third attempt. Um, it's starting to get closer. Um, it's it's a bit of a faff, I'll be honest. So that one now drops into place. Um, and I think what I'm probably going to end up doing is putting some liquid metal around the edges. But then I've just noticed there's a big scratch. Scuff on it. So, I don't know. It might work, it might not. We'll see, there's another scuff over there, but it's, it's going to be what it is. But all I'm really doing here is just kind of cutting a piece out, lining it up. Um, as you can see, I squared off the hole. I think what I might do is exactly as I said, I'm going to put some liquid metal around the edges. Um, this stuff, maybe well. Put that around the edges and just see if I can kind of smooth it in. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. If it does work, fabulous probably end up putting the overdrive badge over it anyway. Been building up the seats. I've got the headlining in. Well, I've got the front half of the headlining in. It's been the progress, uh, really, this morning. Um, and then pissing around with the dash, which I'm <laughs> not that happy with, actually. It looks a bit cack. Um, I've just glued a bit of plastic onto the back of it. Um, it's better than a kick in the face, but I'm not... We'll see. We'll see. Um, seats. These seat frames, they came out of the 1972 project I did, Project Allen. And I had another set of seats that I refurbished to go into that. Uh, I couldn't even tell you where those seats came from. But these are the ones out of Allen. Um, now, <clears throat> metal backing on the seat back. B suffix, webbed. Hmm. The seat belt on this was welded onto a bracket onto the base here. Um, it was not a factory weld. It was just a mess. So I need to find out how I'm going to get the seat belts melded, welded onto this because I couldn't get... Well, did I lob them down here? Here they are. So basically, oh my God, if I get hold of it, someone, previous owner, Alan, had welded a lump of steel onto the seat belt housing itself and then welded that to the underside of the back of the frame here. Now, I would have left that if those seat belts had been any good, but they're not, so I had to cut it off. Um, diaphragms, clearly seen 
much better days. There's been a lot of farting going on on this chair. Less so on this one. Um, I've got all of the brackets that allow the seats to tip and slide. Um, and I was thinking about putting the springs on them. Which was something that came in. Um, these big bastards here. So this is something that came in on the late B C suffix. And it basically, when you kind of pulled the handle, it pulled the seat back. So it was quite a lot of effort getting the seat forwards, but you could spring it back really quite easily. Uh, they're off Alan as well. Um, so really, this is all my stash of seat parts. So what I was really looking at with these, um, on one of the brackets, that's a broken one, but on one of the brackets, and I think that'll be it, you got that nobule down there. And the idea behind that nobule is it clashes with that and stops the seat coming off off the runners but then I put bolts through the front here so it shouldn't happen um, this one here um, I think it probably came out of Alan has been chopped off probably because you couldn't get the seat out uh, so he's chopped it off um, it'll work it will work uh, so I've got to work out how to do the seat um, the seat belts, uh, and then I've got to work out how to trim them. But apart from that, it's all going really well. <laughs> Cushy. Um, these seats came out of that absolutely rotten B suffix uh, that I hauled the engine out of for Dave Murray down in Bodmin. Um, so I'm using those for parts more than anything else. The seat backs probably are serviceable the seat bases they're just rotten it's lost all this lip around the edge here um the metal's all really gone very very thin on the top of the rail so bearing in mind the seat belts attached to them i'm not sure i trust them very you know very much but the seat back could come in useful because it's actually got the bracket on there for the seat belt right more seat shenanigans um so what i've basically got these bastards are so these bastards these really nice seat bags they are a and b suffix um they don't recommend uh fitting the uh inertia reels to them because they don't have the mountings on them these ones down here although they came from a b suffix car are actually d suffix and onwards uh because they've got the two mountings one there and one there for the inertia reel um, and then the belt comes through the top of the frame up here there's a big bolt up there as well depending on which side the seat goes onto. These also come fitted with the uh, the mountings uh, for the headrest, unlike that one, which has been drilled through. <clears throat> so, where I'm going, bear with me on this. My dad wants inertia reels in his car, and I don't blame him. They're much more convenient than the kind of the fixed belts, because uh, you could lean forwards and so forth. Um, so, I'm going to go for inertia belts. Um, I thought about, um, again, welding brackets onto the back of the ASIF suffix backs and I'm not against that idea just yet but what I'm doing as you can see here I've taken the seat back off the rotten seat base and the seat back is actually in good serviceable order except for the webbing and then I thought ah I've got some four, four door seat backs here with a slightly different style of webbing I wonder if that will fit on or wonder if that can be made to fit on I don't know yet we'll see Worst comes to the worst, I get some new webbing strips. That's not the end of the world, is it? Let's face it. Um, and then I've got all of the retrim kit sitting there waiting patiently to go on. So I want to get these seats so I know exactly what is going to happen with them um, today. Get the parts ordered and get these seats... Seat, put my teeth in. It's Thursday today. If I can get the parts for tomorrow, then I'll get these seats built up over this weekend or very early next week. Um... Now, this one here, this is a driver's seat. I know it's a driver's seat because it's got, and this is the bit I was telling you about earlier in the video, it's got the lug on the end of it, which stops the seat from going back too far because it clatters against the bar that goes across the seat base that was missing on Diana. That chap there, which isn't bolted in yet. Fuck my boots. <laughs> so, and as you can see, also, this one's got the spring that helps it spring the seat back. Helps it pull the seat backwards again. Um, so I'm inclined to actually go with this mechanism, but on these bases, because these bases are in far better shape. You can see here, we've got this whole skirt that goes around the front here. And we have it on this one. 
and also on this one you can see where this was not as bad as the other one but you can see where the surface is pitted this one might be savable <coughs> with a bit of work i think this one is just a bridge too far we'll see but anyway um so the trick now is to get these things apart now 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 and now and now we've got the seat control here Moves the seat backwards and forwards. And on the bottom of the seat, all that really does, maybe it's my bar, is lifts up these two lugs here out of the track and allows the seat to slide backwards. When you tilt the seat and pull the handle, that then <coughs> brings the handle forwards, but also then as you pull the seat forwards, it pushes down on this to bring the bar forward and allows you to uh, move the seat forwards. There's two pins that go through these arms. I've taken them out because I wanted to get the seat apart. Um, so it's a very, very, very simple operation on how these things work. I think what I'm going to do is get the um, <coughs> get these two arms off. Um, and <laughs> as is predictable, they're seized in, they're rusted in. I mean, the seat won't have to be tilt. Oh, it might. It might chill. It's, it's certainly rusty, and the only place this is rusty is on these pins here. So I need to get these pins out. Uh, now, they look like that. It's exactly what they look like. There's a threaded hole in this end. You put a screw in there, literally to hold the uh, hold the arm on. Um, it's just a fairly standard shanked bolt. Well, those things. There you go. <clears throat> and I've got a box of those because I always manage to save them in one way or another. Always manage to save them. So let me get this thing apart. Uh, these are damaged on this one, but what, what's the trick you can do with these is, is swap them over from one side to the other. Because this face here is hidden here, and that face isn't. So you can swap these over. And sometimes you get away with it, sometimes you don't. Um, they are available new. Um, you know, I'm trying to save the planet here, folks. Let's reuse. Years old, old stock, eh? Um, and this one's got a problem with webbing as well. So I need some new strips of webbing. It's actually this bit I need. But the up and down bits are in basically good order. So we'll see. It looks like it's fairly straightforward stuff. Ta da! They came out. They was proper seized in though. Um, so a load of. Release penetrant, that stuff, not the fast release penetrant, um, and managed to get with a drift, get the bolts out far enough that I could get these off intact, um, and then just percuss them out. As you can see, the, 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 even the screws came out in good order. Lots of rust, though. <laughs> anyway, it's off. Gave it a quick going over. With a zip wheel, I'm going to put some of the uh, FE123 rust treatment on it. There's nothing particularly nasty about it, though. It's all very much surface rust, and this is what it started out looking like. This is the other one. Um, yeah, it's come up quite nice, that. So I'm going to give it some rust treatment and uh, a lick of paint, spray something like hammer or something like that onto it. Maybe rust odium. I don't know. I'll put something on it. Just protect it. It should stay dry. Now, now the kind of the car was well, going into this car. So the only reason it's got into this state is because it was probably stored in the field with no floors and uh, the windows open. Yeah, get this one looking like that one, and I'll be ready to go. Back together again. I'm video trimming the seats because I just couldn't be bothered with editing all of the swear words out. There've been far, far too many. Um, I've not done the seat back boards yet. They're not on. There we are. Seat, no seat back boards. And I've got a transmission tunnel cover, but I haven't. I seem to have lost the gear sticks around, which I'm irritated about because I probably stuck it on Alan, which I gave away, as you well know. Project Alan, I should say. I didn't give a human being away. No, 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 no. It's all my boxes of treasure here. I'll sort this lot out later on. Diana's coming together quite quickly. Didn't take long to put these together. Trimming the seats has taken me a while though. 
Um, floor mattings, original floor mattings are kind of going back in. This one here at the back here though, from a four door. Um, now I've been over to see Mr. Hammond this weekend uh, uh, down at his new base um, in uh, in Devon Shate. I've also been shifting cars around as well. But uh, now back onto this. This has got to get done this week. <laughs> yes. Uh, so as you can see, the doors are kind of the seats all heading in the right direction. This doesn't shut quite so nicely now. That ah, the battery filled up on me phone. Yeah. So these are four door. Uh, been to see Mr. Hammond. Got some two door units over here, which I'm going to try and fit in here. I'm not using Justin Series 3 as a table, but they're very, very soft and they're sitting on uh, cloth over there, so there's no butchery going on, folks. Um, yeah, I need to get this thing finished. A little bit of rush treatment around the back end here, nothing particularly serious. Uh, yeah, get this thing put together. Now, what I was going to do, oh, I just mentioned, didn't I? Yes, this um, door doesn't shut nicely anymore because. I put this seal on down here um, and it's quite rigid it's I don't know anyway the door does shut just needs a firmer hand to it so I'm just getting ready now I'm gonna change the oil on this um, because obviously I've had the front timing cover off and water and so forth dribble down into the sun but it needs an oil change anyway um, so I'm gonna change the oil put a genuine oil filter back on one of these puppies um, genuine parts I find that the oil pressure light goes out a damn sight quicker when you use these than um, some of the other third-party filters that are out there but rather than guess which ones are good and which ones are crap I just use a genuine one I appreciate that the OE supply does change from time to time but these are built to a standard um, and then we can get this puppy started up no distributor in at the moment because once the oil's been changed I need to just uh, prime the oil pump um, because it's been empty for a while and obviously the filter's been out and I've taken the timing cover off and blah 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 so as part of all of that process I need to reprime um, the pump and make sure that that's in good order um, so yeah let me get on with changing the oil and then I'm gonna do that now the other thing I was looking at for some reason the um, ignition amplifier the IAM whatever you call it, the ignition amplifier module, the I, yeah, IAM, uh, is located over here on a plate rather than on the side of the distributed body. Now, I know that they do struggle sometimes when they're on the side of the distributed body, but this 35 DLM8 really should have it on the side of the body. So I'm inclined to actually pop it back on there and simplify the situation somewhat. Um, this distributor is okay. Uh, as you can see, I'm using distributor doctor rotor and so forth. The vacuum advance works on it. Um, yeah, it's okay. So, <clears throat> so, 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 so. And I ran out of the little plugs that hold the side trims on, which is a pain. Right, topped up with a uh, quality 2050 um, oil. This particular case, it was <clears throat> Classic Oils um, Heritage 2050. It's got high level of zinc. A ZDDP, um, which is kind of what older engines need. Don't put anything mineral. Sorry, don't put anything other than mineral in these old engines. They don't like synthetic oils. Now, all I do now is I've got my multimeter here. I've stuck one probe into the uh, the oil pressure sensor. I'll put the other one to earth on the engine. And as you can see, it's gone open circuit. Okay, and then I'm going to wind the drill clockwise. We're getting oil pressure because it's closed the circuit and then it should open up in a second. Good oil pressure. Stay there for a long time. But all I'm doing here is I'm, I'm driving the top of the oil pump. Oh, bloody wires fall out down here, that's why. Uh, but I'm driving the top of the oil pump. Um, so. <laughs> You can do it in a number of different ways because I do it quite a lot. I bought the uh, the little adapter that you put onto these later style things, um, and, and basically after I do an oil change, because the distributor was out anyway, I thought right, just wind the oil pump over. It goes at a fairly high speed. You can't do it with a battery drill; it's got to be a mains drill. Wind it over at fairly high speed, and eventually the drill goes under quite a lot of load. 
that's the point where you've got the system primed. And then just double check it just by checking that the old pressure light goes out, or you get continuity or lack of continuity with your old pressure sensor. Right, so just strip the gear back in now. I've had enough of front seats, I tell you, for a lifetime. I do not want to get into trimming these Range Rover front seats. <laughs> it's been a bastard of a job, but even now I'm not happy with them because the foam at the top here hasn't glued onto the top of the frame properly, so it sits proud of the, the backing. Right, I'm doing the back seat now because otherwise what will happen is I'll end up spending the rest of this year doing the front seat. So... Out of my stash of all of the back seats that I've got, and there's loads over there as well, I've managed to pull out an acceptable seat base and a acceptable seat back. Um, and they're just hinged on this little pivot here. You need to be aware that the early cars have the mounting brackets on the sides, and the later cars have got them um, halfway underneath, uh, like this one over here. No, that's an early one. No, it's a late one. Late one. Mounts like that onto the floor. They've got these little brackets that mount onto the floor. Uh, they're not interchangeable. Um, and then the early cars, the mounting pieces, actually go on to, let's go round the back here, this plinth here. Well, there should be two holes in there underneath all that dirt, which I've got to vacuum out. Um, and that's where they hinge off the early cars. It's a nice way of telling whether a car's early or late as well. There you go. Right, close a look at these seats. Because um, overall, I am quite pleased with them. I mean, they have come out nice. But silly bits like that have just pissed me off. Got the rest of the dashing, as you can see. It's all looking very nice, isn't it? Oh, yes. I know I haven't done the carts on the bottom of the door yet. I'm just... <laughs> Finishing fiddling around with odds and sods and bits and bobs. I haven't done the handle on that side either because one of the grab pulley handles uh, just wanted painting. So, I'll just close that again. Otherwise, I'm going to bump into. I'm going to bump into it. I've also this week been trimming out the back end of the car, so I've put in these deep post covers don't worry about that piece of trim there that just holds those up there these two here are for the heated rear window which we've got but the connectors have broken off it so I'm not going to bother wiring that up just yet for the sake of time and again this side this panel just it, it goes underneath the, the trailing edge of the sidey slidey rubber um got the tools sorted out well those were already all there they're all original um, all original clips and everything. I haven't got a jack for this car and I haven't got the jacking bar for this car So I'm gonna to need to find those. I've got a starting handle though. It's always helpful And where these holes are such as this one right here that you can see glinting um, I'm gonna put grommets in those uh, and those holes were for the mounting points for the um, <sighs> LPG and this LPG holes down here as well. I'm gonna just put big bungs in them um, for now, for now, and again, all this crap needs cleaning out. I did find the remnants of the side trim. Look at that. Tim will be jealous, and I've got the boot mat on this one as well. So, yeah, it's all coming together. Engine bay. Um, I found out why the ignition amplifier is mounted remotely, and that's because with the early style power steering pump, it won't fit. So I'm not happy with the um, wires, the extension wires that have been made up. Um, I just think it's a, a failure point, so I've ordered some more connectors to do that. Bolted the battery in, filled the cooling system up, got the ignition timing all set, ready to start. Uh, fuel pumps wired in and running, and all I've done as a failsafe, because this thing only comes with three bloody fuse, four fuses. I've put a fuse up there somewhere. There's, a, there's an inline fuse for the supply for the fuel pump which whirs away quite happily. It does look nicer, doesn't it? I'm pleased with it. There's a patinery feel to it. So this centre cover, that is a nationwide trim. All the floor matting is original. Not, I think these are original to this car, actually. Um, yes, they're original. Um, I've got, I lost the original rear mat, because I think it went in the 1972 project that I gave away. I'm going to stop mentioning that one day. Um, that's a four-door one. I did find a two-door panel, which is okay, 
but not as nice as the one that Tim Hammond had. So I'll pinch one off Tim. Thanks, Tim. Yes, so rear seats. So I pulled basically the screws going from the underside. And you find things like, what, what do you reckon that is? That is a Hubba Bubba, I reckon. Anyone remember Hubba Bubba's? Was it Hubba Bubba? Tropical Tang, chewing gum. Or bubble gum, I think that was Hubba Bubba. Um, and then there was another one over here as well. Look, there's another one. That one looks like a, let's just see if we can get this out without damaging it too much. That looks like a Starburst. Oh, I thought it was going to be an opal fruit. I thought it was going to be a real blast from the 70s. Starburst was what opal fruits became, I think. Correct me if I'm wrong. That was a strawberry and kiwi starburst there. And I also found a lucky penny. There we are. There's a lucky penny underneath the seat. Lucky because it's going back into this car with a new cover. So let me have a little bit of a clear up. Another set of carbs. Oh, God help us. Um, little weed clear up. There we are. My box of all the crap down there. I'm just going to go up to the tip. None of that is recyclable in there. It's just all shite. Um, I don't need this on the bench just now. Um, so now I'm happy I'm going to use this one. I'm going to go into the pile of bits that I'm going to use. Um, the only thing that's wrong with this one is it's someone drilled holes and put the seat belt mountings through the seat base. Hmm. I'm not sure that was the best place to put them. So rather than using the hole that's about there in the floor, they put a bolt through there and use the seat base. Hmm. Yeah. Anyway, that's all gone now. The seat back that that one came with is it's actually good order, except for they drill bloody gritty holes through it for the seat belt mounting. So I'll be able to recover it. It will, it will live again. I'll use it again. That's better than some of the other ones that I've got. That's all right, that one. I'll live with that. Um, right, let me get myself sorted out because there's the foams up there. No paint is being scratched. Rest thy sphincters. Rest, sphincters, rest. Um, and I will get the bag of foam, which is over here on the upturned headlining, which I need to do something with because this headlining started to kind of fall apart. And I thought, well, I've got all the glue and everything out. I might might be able to do something with it don't know yet uh, but that's the original headlining out of this car as well oh, dear, 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 dear. Right, it's about you up here. this is the other seat base i've got um it's a bit torn it's not the best out there i mean someone might have to do something magical with the cover but i'll use that one i think because that cover's going to come off there anyway Right. So, what am I going to do with this? Am I going to take this cover off, or am I going to just leave it on the foam and put the new cover over the top? I think, to be honest, it's going to be... We'll see what it fits like. It's going to be the latter, I think, a period of time, but... No, it looks not bad. It looks not as bad as the P38. People keep asking me when I'm going to start that P38. Um, I think when Blue Car is back on the road again, Stag is working again. <laughs> um, and I've got my three sons' cars to maintain as well. When all that lot's done, I might have some time to put into the P38. Right, the only thing is, I don't know whether that's going to actually look shit when I so, can't get this out it's a bit on the bottom side. I'm trying to clear up, I'm making more mess. <laughs> I think I'm gonna take a couple off. It's just a bit too knackered. I've got another seat base if I balls it up. I've got another seat base if I balls it up. So just the fabric has, uh, has died. 
Someone's going to be shouting right now. Don't destroy it! Well, it's fucking done that itself. Sorry. Don't destroy it! It's done that itself! I don't know which bit you want me to keep. Waste of a time, Richard. Like this. Whoops, hello. <laughs> there goes a clout in the uh, fluorescent tube. Quite tough, those. Right, let's see if we can ease this off the frame. It's actually coming off fairly easily. Oh my goodness, a knife. Knife in the knife face. Will do. Where's the knife gone? There we go. Mac, as I like to call him. Right down past the glue section. That's alright. Uh, I've got some staples down there. La, 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 la. Oh, look, bit glue on the top edge. What was that? Oh no, sorry, it's the piping there has gone in. Probably to hold it on. That's off. Thinking about it. It's off, it's off, it's off. She goes sheep shearing. Except I don't think you use a Stanley knife to shear a sheep. We vegans and animal that are screeching the television right now. Does. It's just a little bit glued on there. I'm tempted not to <laughs> pull it right off for now. Deformation there. I don't think there's anything particular to worry about. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. 